Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variation. This is the tenth lecture of the series. In this, we will consider more general functionals. Recall that in the last lecture, we had functional of the type i y equal to x 1 integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime d x and y is supposed to satisfy these boundary conditions y at x 1 equal to y 1 and y at x 2 equal to y 2. Now, we shall consider more general functional of the type i y 1 y 2 and so on and y n. So, there are n functions uh, admissible functions such that this i y is of the type integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y 1 x y 2 x so on y n x n then the derivatives are appearing y 1 prime x y 2 prime x and so on y n prime x d x and then these y i's are to satisfy the boundary conditions that y 1 x 1 equal to alpha 1 y 2 x 1 equal to alpha 2 and so on y n x 1 equal to alpha n and y 1 at x 2 is beta 1, y 2 at x 2 is beta 2 and so on, y n at x 2 equal to beta n. So, these are the boundary conditions for each uh, of these y i's are to be imposed to satisfy and so this i is function of all these n functions y 1, y 2, y n. Here x is independent variable and these y 1, y 2, y n are functions of x and the derivatives are appearing here y 1 prime x, y 2 prime x and so on to y n prime x. So, here all these y i's are assumed to satisfy certain smoothness properties, so that this integral is well defined. Now, here we would like to have uh, this set of all these y 1, y 2, y n to satisfy uh, certain equation, so that uh, that will be a kind of a necessary condition as we had got uh, Euler's equation in the uh, case where i y was x f of integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime d x. So, similar kind of equation we would like to obtain uh, which will be a necessary condition uh, to be satisfied by these n functions in order this y uh, uh, this in functional i to have optimal value. So, we proceed in the same manner what we do here we vary y j only and keep y 1, y 2, so on y j minus 1, y j plus 1, y n fixed. So, we change only uh, y j and so we get this phi 
alpha as function i of y j plus alpha delta y j, which is nothing but the integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y 1 y 2 and so on y j minus 1 y j plus alpha delta y j and then y j plus 1 and y n and then there are derivatives y 1 prime y 2 prime so on y j minus 1 prime y j prime plus alpha delta y j prime and then y j plus 1 prime and so on to y n prime d x. So, uh, the necessary condition condition that this y j, so y 1, y 2, y n give the optimal value of i is phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 must be equal to 0 in this case, this particular case and so we get phi prime alpha is integral x 1 to x 2 f of y 1 plus alpha delta sorry y 1 here only we have y j plus it times delta y j here plus f of y j prime plus alpha delta y j prime and delta y j prime d x. Now, as before we shift this derivative here and so this is equal to x 1 to x 2 f of y j plus alpha delta y j minus d by d x of f of y j prime plus alpha delta y j prime delta y j x d x and so hence this phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 equal to 0 implies that integral x 1 to x 2 f of y j minus d by d x f of y j prime delta y j d x. We invoke the fundamental theorem fundamental lemma of the calculus of variation to get f y j minus d by d x of f y j prime equal to 0. So, this is what we get this since j 
lies between 1 to n is uh, arbitrarily chosen hence f of y j minus d by d x f of y j prime is 0 for j equal to 1, 2 and so on up to n. So, we get the system of equations for each y j we get one equation like Euler's equation. So, the, this system is so, this system of second order equations, second order differential equations forms the necessary condition such that this y 1, y 2, y n optimizes i y 1, y 2, y n. And there will be obviously constants appearing in the solutions and those constants are to be determined by the given conditions. So, we will take some examples here. So, let us, so in particular if n equal to 2, we get i y z is integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y x z x and y prime x z prime x. Here, so this let us give this, this is 10.1. So, 10.1 in this case is f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 and f z minus d by d x of f z prime equal to 0. Here uh, we have situation like this, this is x axis, y axis this is z axis. So, here in a 3 D space that say these are the two points A and uh, B. So, this is like you have x 1, y at x 1 we will call it y 1, z at x 1 as z 1 and here x 2, y 2, z 2. So, these are two points here. So, this will be the curve which will be parameterized as x, y x and z x. So, any point here typical point P will have this coordinates is x, y x and z of x. Here this let us say this is the projection of this here like this in the x y plane. 
So, this is A dash B dash. So, this is x y x and 0. So, this is x 1 y at x 1 and 0. This is x 2 y at x 2 and 0. And if you project this on to this like this, you have let us say a double dash here and b double dash here. So, this is the curve z x curve which is in the x z plane and this is the curve y x curve. So, here we will have uh, in this case x and y x are there and z is free. So, it is going to be this plane like this. hypersurface rather and here this only x and z x are here in, in this and y is free. So, it will give us a surface like this. And so, here uh, this curve is the intersection of two surfaces the curve x y x z x is the intersection of two surfaces that is here you have uh, x and z x given and y is free. So, it goes in this direction and here in this case you have in the surface you have x y x moving along this curve and uh, z is free there. So, let us say this is surface this is surface s 1 and this is surface s 2 s 1 and s 2. So, that is the situation here. So, let us take this example 10.1 let us call it 10.2 now. So, here i of y comma z is 0 to 1 y prime square plus z prime square plus 2 y z d x and the conditions are y 0 equal to 0, y at 1 equal to 1 and z 0 equal to 0 and z at 1 equal to minus 1. So, in this case f x y z y prime z prime is given by y prime square plus z prime square plus 2 y z. And so, the system 10.1 implies that f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0 and f z minus d by d x of f z prime is 0 gives here uh, 2 z minus you get y double prime equal to 0 and 2 y minus 2 z double prime equal to 0. So, we have thus we have y double prime equal to z and z double prime equal to y. So, differentiating differentiating first 
let us say this is A and this is B, A twice with respect to x we get y fourth derivative equal to z double prime, but z double prime equal to y and so we get this implies that d 4 minus i of y equal to 0 or d square plus 1 into d square plus i to d square minus i of y equal to 0. And so, the auxiliary equation is m square plus 1 into m square minus 1 equal to 0 and it has roots uh, plus 1 minus 1 and plus i minus i. So, we get y of x as c 1 e to the power x plus c 2 e to the power minus x plus c 3 cos x plus c 4 sin x. And so, y and z equal to y double prime and so this is equal to c 1 e to the power x plus c 2 e to the power minus x and here because here twice derivative gives you again plus sign here twice derivatives will give you minus sign. So, minus c 3 cos x minus c 4 sin x. Now, these c 1, c 2, c 3, c 4 will have to be determined by the given condition. So, that we use here. Now, since y 0, we have these conditions y 0 equal to 0, y 1 equal to 1, z 0 equal to 0 and z at 1 equal to minus 1. So, we have these conditions. So, these imply so first using this since now y x is this c 1 e to the power x plus c 2 e to the power minus x plus c 3 cos x plus c 4 sin x and z is c 1 e to the power x plus c 2 e to the power minus x and minus c 3 cos x minus c 4 sin x. So, both these imply now that y at 0 equal to. So, you get c 1 plus c 2 plus c 3 equal to 0 and z 0 equal to 0 implies z 0 equal to 0 this also implies that c 1 plus c 2 minus c 3 equal to 0. And so, these two will imply uh, simply uh, subtracting these two by subtracting this gives us c 3 is equal to 0. And now, y at 1 equal to 1 and z at 1 equal to minus 1 will imply that c 1 e plus c 2 by e plus c 4 c 3 is now 0. So, uh, that is gone sin 1 equal to 1 and c 1 e plus c 2 by e minus c 4 sin 1 equal to minus 1. So, subtracting we get c 4 
uh, twice of this uh, equal to 2. So, we get C 4 equal to 1 over sin 1. Now, we see that and adding we get C 1 e plus C 2 over e equal to 0. Now, one solution is clearly we have we can get clearly C 1 equal to C 2 equal to 0 satisfies this. We have to ensure that this is the only solution to ensure that we show that this is the only solution. Since, if C 1 is not 0, then clearly then we get E square equal to C 2 by C 1 and hence C 1 and C 2 will have the same sign and therefore, but, but then C 1 e plus C 2 by e cannot be 0. Hence, this is not possible. Hence, we have only C 1 equal to C 2 equal to 0. So, we get finally, this y x equal to thus y x equal to sin x by sin 1 and z x equal to minus sin x by sin 1. So, that is the case in this example. Now, the next example here ten point three. So, I y comma z is here x 1 to x 2 f y prime z prime d x. Here the variable x is missing and so here f x y z y prime z prime is f y prime and z prime. The variables x, y and z do not appear explicitly. So, it was in the uh, like in the earlier case function of y prime only uh, in uh, the special case which we had here like this and uh, similarly here we have uh, only since the now there are two de dependent variables and f is function of uh, y prime and z prime only. So, it is similar to that case or generalization of that one and so here this system 10.1 gives that which is actually f y uh, minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 and f z minus d by d x of f z prime equal to 0 reduces reduced to 
f d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 and d by d x of f z prime equal to 0. So, we now this is function of y prime and z prime sim and si similarly f of z prime is also function of y prime and z prime since y is so and therefore, opening this expanding we get f y prime y prime y double prime plus f of y prime z prime z double prime equal to 0 and f of z prime y prime y double prime plus f of z prime z prime z double prime equal to 0. Now, here we would like to solve this system for y and z and so if the coefficients uh, satisfy this if this this into this minus this into this this is not 0. So, y prime y prime into this f of z prime z prime minus f of y prime z prime into f of z prime y prime if this is not 0. So, then we know that the only trivial solution should have hold and so y double prime equal to 0 and z double prime equal to 0 and this implies that y equal to a x plus b and z equal to c x plus d. So, in this case you have situation like here Uh, this is a straight line like this, this is and similarly here. So, this is a x plus b and this is c x plus d and so here z is free. So, this is this vertical plane like this and here So, something like this in this. So, here the intersection. So, the curve x y x z x is the intersection of two planes. Hence, a straight line. So, in this case, we get straight line. Now, this next example it is this is from optics. Here it is asked to find find the curve along which curve light light moving with the velocity v which is a function of x y z takes the minimum time. So, this is Fermat's principle what it says that uh, the light passing through two points here a that is x 1 y 1 z 1 and b x 2 y 2 z 2 moving with velocity this takes 
So, uh, the least time it takes that path. So, that here uh, the time taken by this uh, light ray which is moving with the velocity v x which is a function of x y z takes the least time. So, uh, we know that the time taken by uh, this here then it will be function of y z and it will be integral from x 1 to x 2 uh, d s over the velocity this v x y z. And now, d s we know that in three dimension it is square root d x square plus d y square plus d z square over you have v x y z. Now, if you take x as parameter and y as a function of uh, uh, x and z as function of x, then we see that this is x 1 to x 2 square root plus 1 plus y prime square z prime square d x comes out and v of x y z. So, it is of the type what we have been considering and so here f is x y z y prime z prime which is square root 1 plus y prime square plus z prime square over v x y z. And so, 10.1 implies that which is f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 and f z minus d by d x of f z prime equal to 0 uh, gives you uh, here f y gives you square root 1 plus y prime square plus z prime square over minus v square and then v x and minus d by d x of a 1 over v and 1 over uh, should be y prime then square root 1 plus y prime square plus z prime square equal to 0. So, we can uh, multiply by minus and we make it plus here. Similarly, uh, the second one will give sorry this should be y derivative v y. So, square root of 1 plus one plus y prime square plus z prime square over v square and v z plus d by d x of one over v z prime over square root one plus y prime square plus z prime square. So, this is the system which should be satisfied by the velocity v and uh, y prime and z prime. So, in order to get y and z, we solve the, this system to get the extremals. Now, next we will consider when higher derivatives are appearing, f involves higher order derivative so here it will be like i of y x1 to x2 f of x yx and then y prime x and so on up to nth derivative x. Still, it is not general. Uh, the next one will be where these y 1, y 2, y m are appearing and their de higher order derivatives are also appearing. So, first we tackle this case. So, here uh, this y and its derivatives up to n minus 1 must satisfy these conditions y at x 1 is alpha 1 
y prime at x 2 sorry x 1 is alpha 2 up to y n minus 1 at x 1 is alpha n and y at x 2 is beta 1 y prime at x 2 is beta 2 and so on to y n minus 1 x 2 is beta n. So, you would like to see what are the conditions being satisfied by this y in order this i to have optimal value. So, here we proceed in the same manner we consider this phi alpha like this which is i of y plus alpha delta y and so this is equal to integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y plus alpha delta y and y prime plus alpha delta y prime and so on y n plus alpha delta y n d x. And so, differentiating it f with respect to alpha we get x 1 to x 2 f y plus alpha delta y to delta y plus f of y prime plus alpha delta y prime and so this with respect to alpha will leave delta y prime and so on plus f of y n plus alpha delta y n to delta y n d x. And proceeding in the same manner shifting these derivatives onto f will give us this x 1 to x 2 f of y plus alpha delta y minus and so delta y will be really uh, I mean raised from here that will take out and so we will have d by d x of f y prime alpha delta y prime plus d 2 by d x 2 f of y double prime plus alpha delta y double prime minus plus so on plus the last term will be minus 1 to the power n d n over d x n f of n at y n plus alpha delta y n delta y x d x. And so, now the condition is f prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 must be equal to 0 that is the necessary condition and so it implies that x 1 to x 2 f y minus d by d x of f y prime plus d 2 by d x 2 f y double prime and so on minus plus and minus 1 to the power n d n over d x n of f y n delta y x d x equal to 0. So, the fundamental theorem fundamental lemma of the calculus of variation implies that f y minus d by d x of f y prime plus d 2 by d x 2 f y double prime minus plus 1 plus minus 1 to the power n f y nth derivative is 0. So, this is what is called the Euler, Euler Poisson equation.
So, Euler Poisson equation is the necessary condition for y to have the optimal value of the functional. So, here let us consider some examples. So, this example is now let us see what we had earlier. 10.4 or rather we will put it this one as 10.5 and this as 10.6. Here we consider I y is 0 to 1, 1 plus y double prime square d x. So, the conditions are y 0, 0, y prime 0 is 1 and y at 1 is 1 and y prime at 1 is also 1. So, this 10.5 that is Euler Poisson equation 10.5 implies in this case uh, f y minus d by d x of f y prime plus d 2 by d x 2 of f y double prime because here n equal to 2. So, we get that. And here since f is f of x y y prime y double prime is 1 plus y double prime square here and so we get this not this y is not appearing explicitly. So, we this term is 0 this term is also 0 only we get y fourth derivative equal to 0 and so we get y x as so it should be a polynomial of third degree so it should be of the form a plus b x plus c x square plus d x cube now these a and a b c d will have to be determined by the given conditions so y 0 is y 0 equal to 0 implies that a equal to 0 and of y prime at 0 to 1 implies now y prime x is a is 0. So, we get b plus 2 c x plus 3 d x square. So, this will give us 1 equal to b plus ok. So, b is 1 because now other things. So, b is 1 and so now y is x plus c x square plus d x cube now and so the other conditions that y at 1 is also 1. So, we get 1 equal to 1 plus uh, c plus d. So, this implies that c plus d equal to 0 and the last one y prime 1 equal to 1 implies that 1 equal to 1 plus 2 c plus 3 d equal to 0. So, we get 2 c plus 3 d equal to 0 and this and this would imply that c equal to d equal to 0. So, we get finally, y x equal to uh, only c is 1 uh, sorry uh, only y equal to 
only b equal to 1 and other uh, things are 0. So, we get y equal to x as the extremal, a straight line. in this case as expected that whenever this function involving only highest order derivatives we expect that the solution will be a straight line. The next one would be this example ten point seven and here this i y is see 0 to pi y double prime square minus y square plus x square d x. The conditions are y 0 equal to 1, y prime 0 equal to 0 and y pi equal to minus 1 and y prime at pi equal to 0. So, again this 10.5 implies in this case that f y minus d by d x f y prime plus d 2 f d 2 by d x 2 of f y double prime equal to 0. And so, here since f is which is x y y prime y double prime is y double prime square minus y square plus x square. So, it gives so f y will give us minus 2 y. So, minus 2 y here and plus uh, this there is no y prime here only y double prime and so you get 2 y fourth derivative equal to 0. So, we get d 4 minus i y equal to 0 which or d square plus i into d square minus i y equal to 0. And so, as before we get y x equal to c 1 e to the power x, c 2 e to the power minus x plus c 3 cos x plus c 4 sin x. Now, the conditions imply uh, we have uh, this y 0 equal to 1. So, this is c 1 plus c 2 plus c 3 equal to 1 that is the first condition then y prime 0. So, y prime will give us here. So, y prime 0 means you will have c 1 minus this minus sign will come here minus c 2 this will become minus cos minus sin x and so it will give us minus c 3 this sin x will become cos x and so uh, sorry plus so this sin c 3 will term will not be there plus c 4. So, let us write y prime here. So, y prime is c 1 e to the power x minus c 2 e to the power minus x minus c 3 sin x plus c 4 cos x. So, the we will get this when we put 0 you get c 1 minus c 2 this will become 0 plus c 4 and that is equal to y prime 0 equal to 0 that is the second condition. And now at pi here minus 1. So, you get c 1 e to the power pi plus c 2 over e to the power pi minus c 3 equal to minus 1 and c 1 e to the power pi minus c 2 e to the power 
pi minus c 4 is 0. Now, we can see that here we get this system will have unique solution and we can see that here c 3 equal to 1 and c 1 to c 2 equal to c 4 this is 0. It satisfies this equation because c 3 1 here and this all 0 here this minus 1 and all these 0. So, this since this system is having unique solution and so we can see that c 3 equal to 1 and other things are 0 gives you the solution and we get the extremal y as a function of x as cos x. So, here we consider more general uh, functionals. Now, in the next we will consider where more independent variables will be appearing and we will see that we will have domains in the higher or uh, dimensional spaces that we will consider in the next lecture. Thank you very much for viewing this.